Hey guys, it's Zach and it is a buyer's market so there's a lot of opportunities to buy but you don't want to buy until you watch this video so that you don't lose your deposit and end up getting sued. The market has been on a downwards trend and it may be a good time to buy. However, there are risks associated with buying in market that is downward trending. In this video, I'm going to talk about mistakes to avoid in this market so you don't end up losing your deposit and getting sued and how to spot good deals. YouTube probably put this video in front of you because you've been maybe searching real estate or you've been watching similar topics. So you probably know what's going on in the market roughly. Bank of Canada started increasing rates because of inflation and increasing the rates translates into mortgages being more expensive. That leads to buyers being able to afford less. The same buyer who qualified for let's say a $900,000 mortgage may qualify for $800,000, $850,000 now. But you may be eyeing the market and you're looking to see if there's an opportunity for you to get in. So what you want to do in a market like this is make sure the gun is loaded. Make sure you're ready to pull the trigger when a deal lands in front of you. The worst thing you can do in a market like this is wait until the target is in front of you. You have to go run back in, get everything ready and come back out. Guess what? The target is no longer there. Maybe they've announced that the rates are going to be going back down, there's positivity in the market and prices would go back up really quickly. If you're looking to buy in this market, the first thing you want to do is contact a real estate agent such as me and make sure you start that process of knowing how much you'd be able to get from the bank, um, how much you'll be able to finance and start looking at different uh, areas, different layouts, neighborhoods buildings which building do you like which builder do you like start visiting a few of those to make sure you start narrowing down your search you don't have to pull the trigger yet you want to make sure you're starting to identify those good properties and focusing your search i have two buyer clients right now that are looking to purchase uh, one of them we've actually recently uh, got him a fantastic deal congratulations what we've done is we started looking and as they identified the layout for the buildings they were looking for we just kept an eye on it and the moment one hit the market the price point was good we jumped on it put an offer conditional on financing on a status review everything you want and we've gotten a fantastic deal so now you went you spoke with the real estate agent now you know exactly what you can afford and where you're looking for this is what you want to do to find a good deal there is an art to it. You want to look at a few things to identify a good deal. One, you want to identify properties where the seller is actually motivated to sell and they're not just putting it on the market to see what they can get for it. The way you can see that is by checking the history of that listing. Have they listed it, took it off, listed it again for a bit lower, then a bit higher, then they listed it again, terminated it. That shows you that the seller does want to really sell and they haven't been able to get that price point they were looking for and the market kept sliding down you also want to look at listings that have no pictures maybe uh, they might have a tenant in it not presented well bad pictures it has a little bit of a smell maybe there's carpets things don't look as nice it's a bit dirty that's fantastic because if you're buying a condo for example those are all cosmetic and they're very easy to fix with a little bit of paint and some duct tape if you walk into a property and it's very nicely advertised and it feels so amazing, guess what? There's going to be more people interested in that property and they that may lead into a little bit of competition. And in this market, if you're going after properties that have competition on them, you're still in a seller's market for that specific property. You might be able to find a the exact same unit, let's say in a building, a few floors up, a few floors down that is also listed maybe for a bit longer and it has not been renovated recently and the price point might be so much lower that with the upgrades that you would be making you'd still be getting a fantastic deal it'll be to your taste the renovations you do versus whatever they slap together and maybe the workmanship is not as good as your standard and the third way to identify a fantastic deal is to find YouTube channels that don't have that many subscribers like this one and subscribe to them because guess what we're below 100 which means you're gonna be getting the best subscription deal on the planet so go ahead subscribe
now you're at the end of the journey. You've identified a good property. You're very excited about it. You've done your research. We've got the paperwork. Now we're going to put an offer. It is very important because this is the point where most of the mistakes can be made. You may see yourself in a situation where you might lose your deposit or even be sued. Since we're in a buyer's market, which we haven't been in for a very long time, you have now the ability to add contingencies that protect you during the transaction. One, finance condition. This gives you the ability to take the offer to whoever your lender is and talk to them and make sure that, that the lender also agrees with the value that you've placed on the property so they're not buying something and then finding out later that they think it's a bit less than what you've actually paid for and they're not going to give you the full amount. In that scenario, the buyers find themselves very close to the completion of the transaction that they have to now come up with the difference, maybe 100,000, 200,000, just so that they can close on the transaction. And if that happens and you're unable to get the money, one, you'll be losing your deposit, two, the seller would be able to sue you later when they sell their property for the difference of how much they sold for. Let's say you offered them 1.5 mil and you've ended up not being able to close, then they have to sell it for 1.3 because the market has gone down. They'll be able to sue you for that difference as well. Number two, you wanna make sure you review the status certificate if you're buying a condominium. This is usually reviewed by a lawyer, but you should also read through the documents and the bylaws to see if it makes sense for you. Uh, things like the health of the building and any lawsuits that can materially affect the health of the building are all going to be mentioned in that document. Number three, if you're buying a detached property, a freehold property, you wanna make sure you have an inspection clause in there. This would give you the ability to bring in an inspector who's gonna go in and check everything in the property. Is there enough uh, insulation? Is there any cracks in the foundation? Water coming? Things like that will be uncovered when you do an inspection, which would give you the ability to say, you know what, this might be more costly than we anticipated, or you might be able to renegotiate the deal to make sure it covers some of those deficiencies that you did not uncover when you were putting an offer. So these are some of the conditions that you want to have in your offer. When the offer is accepted, one more thing that is very important that you should do is request that the lender, that they do the appraisal right away. You don't want time to pass and Bank of Canada announces more rate hikes that affects the value of the property or someone in the neighborhood sells for a lower price and at that point your appraisal is going to come lower. Thank you so much for watching this video. I know it's a little bit of rambling but I wanted to address some of these issues because I've seen on TikTok people losing their deposits. It's 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 an amazing time when you find a property that you like, you purchase and you're about to become a homeowner and then you find yourself in a situation you're, where you're going to lose your deposit. It's not fun. So it is good that we're in a buyer's market. We have all the power, we can negotiate, uh, find a beautiful place to move into. However, you want to make sure you stay safe so you don't end up on the wrong side of the equation. On my next video, I'm going to be covering um, landlords and tenant rights. If you guys don't know, the rental market is on fire. Um, I have tenant clients who are having difficulty finding uh, a place just because of the sheer competition good qualified people very good credit it's just we go somewhere we see the unit or before we even get there it's already leased and on the other hand i have landlords who now started demanding things that are not necessarily um, legal although the market's hot and tenants are willing to do anything you want to make sure you protect yourself so my next video is going to cover some of those points so stay tuned you don't want to miss that one if you haven't subscribed yet go ahead subscribe and click the bell icon so you're notified when I post my next video. Thank you so much for watching and see you guys in the next video. Bye.